All right, guys, this video is going to be about a small wind turbine and braking system. Now, what I use in my wind turbine for incoming power is called a slave battery. Now, the reason they're like this is because they're an in-service battery. So they absorb all that power from the wind turbine, and they like act like a shock absorber and allow the energy to go back into your system, okay? Now, there's power cables run over here. Got some jumper cables. We got it rigged up over here, and we're coming into here, and you're going to get to see how this brake switch for your turbine is made and it's a very cheap, very safe, very easy simple process, simple process. This turbine here at about 300 to 350 RPMs is going to put out about 14, 15 amps of power right in front of your eyes. Stay tuned. Look at the links below and me and Kira, we are what? Working. We're working again. So y'all stay tuned. A lot more to come, including a little mention of that thing. Hey everybody, we are working on something. I, had, I get a lot of questions about this, so I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to do this. And it's going to be simple, and I'll show you the outcome, show you how it lays out. Um, right now, what we've got here is we have a 30 amp on and off standard motor switch. These are about $15 to $20. I will put links below the videos to where to get these at. And there's different options. You have the sealed box and you have the open frame. The open frame, you can just cut a hole in plywood, snug to fit, and fit it inside like if you want to put it in one of your little power wall kits. Um, this is for a wind turbine um, or even a water generator, anything that uses a permanent magnet alternator, okay? And you guys send whatever you can with that uh, buy me a coffee program because it's helping. This is how we are able to get some of these extra parts so I can start showing you more of what we're doing. So, um, as it sits right now, the turbine is just simply wired up to a rectifier, and then it is hooked onto battery cables that run back past Ida where she's blacked out too much Ida, and it goes back to batteries over there. So, there's the power coming in, and the battery bank right now has... Was that 13.82 volts? And you can see there's zero amps. So she's going to hold the camera on that right quick. And I'm going to show you what I'm doing over here is I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it in the front end of this wind turbine and I'm going to spin it up. Now, because the battery is already at a pretty healthy voltage, it won't peak too much, but we're going to spin it up anyhow so you can see the result. Now, this is just a porter cable. Oh, by the way, you guys. I am I'm glad I found this brand of battery, and I'll put the link to it too, because everybody that has gotten these from one of my previous videos has just raved about how much better they are than a lot of the other brands that are out there, and I don't know why, but I'm lucky I picked out the good one, and I'll put that link to it too. It fits the, it fits the porter cable in lieu of the uh, NICAD batteries that would normally come with them. So if you have old porter cables, you can put them back to life. All right, so keep an eye on that amperage right there. And I'm going to spin this thing up. So you see, just with this little drill that's only about, I don't know, I think this thing runs about 350 RPMs, um, a wind speed of about 12 to 13 miles per hour, this thing was producing 180 plus watts. So that's pretty normal for one of these. Um, look below the video. I put links to all these different ones, and this is the low wind model. It's uh, not because of the PMA, but it's because of the style of blades. So we're going to go with this now, and I'm going to show you over here where we're going to add the brakes. So the way it works is you're going to take something as simple as a 12-gauge extension cord, and you'll put you some clips or you can use the bare wires and you're going to put it in the off position down here the lower half and I will just snug these in and tighten them up with the drill right here and the impact right quick and then Kira is going to be pushing the button here in a minute all right on the other end of this we're going to just simply put three wires, short wires coming out on the other end here. Kind of difficult to hold that sometimes. And I use these 
connectors here because they, they do make it a lot better for what we're doing. So one, two, and three. Keep that in good focus, dear. Y'all want to see what that broken finger was like I was telling you about? Look at that hand. Look at that. That don't work good now. Can't, well, at least it ain't the good finger, right? So, now, what I want to do next is I'm going to take a standard, a standard 10 to 14 wire nut. That's a 10 to 14 gauge wire nut. And these are 12 gauge 10 wires. And I'm going to put them all together. Now, I know. You're thinking, that's just freaking crazy, right? No. Because the windings... In these generators, we'll put that together real nicely. And there's no fire hazards here. You ain't got nothing to worry about. Now, what the inside of this looks like, I'm going to take this one apart so you'll understand. It is carbon contactors. That is carbon contactors. And the, the mechanism in here works like an ink pen. So if you look up in here, you'll see how it works like an ink pen in the way that it pops on, pops off, and it engages those contactors well creating a dead short on this side over here and the dead short is not going to hurt your wind turbine unless you try to engage it at a point that your wind is completely gone crazy so don't ever do that you want to wait if you got a wind storm coming you want to do it early or you want to do it whenever the turbine spins out of the wind and then you can push the button in and it'll hit the brakes and shut it down now we're using a rectifier right now so the rectifier is a normal feature of what I use. And then I use, of course, my Olympic Power Controls controllers. And this one here is going to, to Billy. So Billy's getting this one, and he's going to see this video, and he's going to be like, oh, hell. So he's getting this one. It's preset, already done. But this one here can run up to about 30 of these 40 amp SSRs, which can divert up to 20,000 watts of power. So that's the point of that. He, he has his own rectifier and his own uh, resistors. And of course that is Olympic power control. So we're gonna show you this with this, but the same, the same system could be done using the small controllers that they send with your wind turbines. The same setup. So these wires would go to the turbine. now. Um, we're laying this on the table and doing this. So you need to realize that normally you'll have your something like a 10 gauge. That's a 10 gauge heavy cord. You'd have like a 10 gauge cord running between the points. So this is on the pole and this is down somewhere in a safe dry location. Okay. Um, so that's, that's the, uh, the standard method of it, how it goes. Okay. Now I'm going to show you here. I'm going to disconnect hot power off of this turbine, I mean off of this rectifier, and then we're just going to hook up to two leads, and I'm going to show you the open wild voltage that'll be coming through this. She's going to show you that, and I'm going to spin it up right quick. Now, you don't have to worry about this volts being very high. You see that? You don't have to worry about the volts being very high. As you can see right there, that's 28 volts, 29 volts, because that's a 12 volt winding, and it's only 300 RPMs, okay? 350 at the most. Now, when it goes through the rectifier and it gets the resistance of the battery, it's going to only give it the battery what it needs. It converts it to amps, not high voltage. All right, so we will uh, put this back together to where its power is going towards the battery bank again. There we go. So you can probably track them wires, and it runs over here through this little watt meter right here. And look below the video, I'll put links to that. There's a whole stream of the parts, guys, from the spades that go on these to the rectifiers to everything, okay, that'll be underneath there. And I will include this in the first half of that. So now you're looking at this and you're saying, how am I going to hook that up? Well, say your wires, these wires go down the pole with this, and they come out the end of the pole. You find a safe spot for your rectifier. And now this is at the point where you'll be adding the rectifier Imagine them wires being 25 foot long, okay? And I'm going to pull that loose. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these and I'm going to put these in with these. So I'm going to put one in. Color doesn't matter, okay? Color don't mean nothing. Now, since I got much more wire in here, I'm going to be using a 8-6 wire nut, okay? These big blue 8-6 wire nuts work beautifully for this. 
So that's eight gauge down to six gauge, or you can put like I'm doing right now, basically three twelves in it. And if this wire looks very thin to you, this is a very thin fire coating. Look how big the copper is. It's as big as the twelve, the ten, almost as big as the ten gauge wire that's in this here. So let me get that on there, and I'll put that on there, and we'll wire that up. Now, the thing about doing this on a table <laughs> is that when this, when she hits the button to hit the brake on this, I'm not going to be trying to spin it up real fast. I'll get it showing amps so you can understand the, the process. But when she does that, it's going to fight so hard, it's going to slow that drill down to, it's going to lock it out, in other words. Because what happens is all the magnetic field is reconverted to where the magnets inside of here become like basically electric braking for an electric car, regenerative, regenerative braking. But instead of allowing um, the heavy weight of the car to spin this, the propellers, the blades, they're not heavy enough, so they'll basically stop the turbine. Super high winds, they'll kind of roll a little bit, but they won't just spin out of control and blow up on you. All right, so that's been removed. Your switch has been made. This is a 30 amp switch, and if you're thinking, well, well, John, that turbine can put out 57 amps, you know, because it can. Um, actually, I think what we get one time, 83. These things will just scream. Their PMA is not this little thing in the front. It goes all the way back here. It's big. The windings are huge. So this is a green energy, and it is just a monster in power, okay? For little as it is. Now, you can see these. You'll see identical looking ones, but their PMA is about that deep in it. So be sure you go and look underneath the video for this turbine. It is the low wind model, like I said. Now, I'm going to give her this, and she's going to hit the on button. When I say so, it'll lock down, as you can see, so there's no mistakes. And then she'll turn it off. I'm going to show you how it powers up, and she's going to watch these amps right here. Now, right now, we've got the air conditioner over here running. You see this? This is that air conditioner that's running right now. And it is running off. It is running off of this little baby, so it's run off little old power bright. And that goes to show you guys that Tatronics, Tatronics. I don't know why I can't pronounce that. That thing there is a hell of a nice air conditioner. So you can't even hardly hear it running in here. The other air conditioner over there is making a hell of a lot more noise. So this is off grid AC, but we're just running it right now because Kira's like it's hot, you know. So all right, back over here. I'm gonna give her the phone again. All right, now, I'm going to be taking this drill here. Let me move this one out of the way. And we're going to spin this thing up like we did there in the beginning. And you're going to see the amps. The amps are going to come up right there, and the watts will come up right there. So well, the battery's got a little bit of use in it, but it should still kick pretty good. Then she's going to hit that on button, and that'll be brakes on. Hit. And that immediately shut me off. I hurt the hell my wrist. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put the drill back in it and she's going to, I'm going to put a little strain against it and then she's going to hit the off button. Hit the off button. There it goes. So you see, hit the on button again. So that's how the brakes will work. God, that thing hits. I had an ice on the damn arm. All right, so... <laughs> I'm getting too old for this shit. Yeah, it, it, it hurt, hurt my wrist. So I'm getting too old for this, guys. But this is how your simple brake switch, and because this has the best contacts in it compared to a toggle switch, it only has a, a pressure switch. This one here is a cam locking switch, and it is much better. They're good for about 15 or 20,000 cycles of service. And for the money and for the safety, you can't beat it. And the simplicity is, like I said there, it's just about basically making that all one magnet. So this basically becomes all one magnet. No, it doesn't lose its magnetism. No, it won't go bad. And yes, it will sometimes in heavy winds allow the blades to just barely rotate because, you know, it's better to do that than allow them to break. Um, and the simplicity is what it is. So don't forget that cable or something similar will go from the bottom of the turbine down the pipe. And this setup you see here is going to be inside your building or your, your area where this can be safe. So as far as using this, this, this here would just replace everything you got here. The three wires, 
right there, and then the two wires out, just like these two right here, and going to your battery bank. We use this because we use these controllers here because I use multiple turbines. Okay, if you're going to use multiple turbines, then you need an all-in-one or something else that can do an actual divert load instead of a quasi. These do a divert load, but not as good as something custom-made. All right, you guys, this wasn't hard to do. Not hard to do at all. And uh, I'm glad that I found that thing. You guys go check them out. There's another video about that AC unit, and it pulls so little power, it's just mind-boggling for how much cold 8350 BTUs for 550 or 60 watts of power. I, I, you, I can't find anything that runs less than 800, 800 watts. This is amazing, amazing little unit. So, Redodo batteries, Red Odo batteries coming up. We are setting up now for them, and they're going to be the slave batteries that shoot power back into that, which goes, as you'll see, backwards into this coupler. Now, this is a coupler that joins an old bank of batteries with a new bank of batteries so that the old batteries can never become parasitic to the new batteries. More of this in my videos, including all these different construction techniques and processes, and I've even got a short video on this opened up so you can take a look at it, and so far it's been a very good affordable controller. Y'all stay tuned, and that works great with lithium batteries. We're ordering another one, so y'all stay tuned. More coming.